Yeah, well, he's been there before, but he hasn't done that. This lightweight contender worked exceedingly hard to get back to a championship setting. And this may be his last title shot if he doesn't get the win tonight. Yeah, you, you can't not get there twice. When you're there, you got to win it. Or you don't get the opportunity again. This guy put his head down and went right back to work from the moment he heard and still. He said that at some point, we would put the belt around his waist. He would put in the work. He would prepare. He's back here now, John. And he intends to be the champion. And when you suffer a setback, there are two ways to go. And this man went on the right trajectory. Really good to see him get back here. And now we find out if he's got the goods to be a champion. Well, you can argue this is the single hardest belt in the UFC to defend. The UFC's lightweight division has long been a murderer's row, and this champion's latest challenger looks like he could come through and upset the epicrat. We were talking to him the other day, and I asked him about the fight. He goes, DC, nothing surprises me, because every time I go in there, I fight the toughest, scariest opponent. I understand my opponent's good, but I'm the champion for a reason, and I intend for it to stay that way. Seemed like he had a great training camp, a great weight cut, and even though there are definite stylistic challenges in front of him here tonight, told us on Thursday in the fighter meeting, skill for skill, I'm better than this, than this guy everywhere, and I'm gonna prove it in a big way in front of this capacity crowd tonight. Well, so much UFC history has played out here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Plenty more where that came from tonight. The athletes are ready to go. Our tail of the tape for this lightweight championship fight. All right, we send it back inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Armin Ahalkalakis Zarukian. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Daniel Darius. One of the best in the business, Drew Dean is our referee Ready. tonight. Good. All right, here we go, another big night for the MMA leader from Las Vegas, Nevada's T-Mobile Arena. Been a lot of seminal moments in this building, I can think of one. It was a big one for me, UFC 226. But John, also UFC 200, I've got this man across the cage from Anderson Silva in that arena. This is a place where big fights happen. And tonight, you get to stand amongst the legends at the T-Mobile Arena. Straight right, he misses. Just out of range with that left hook. All right, we go to the clinch right now where this BJJ fighter has been pretty good at finding a way to get the fight to the ground. We'll see if he can do it here. He gets the fight to the ground mainly from the clinch. This is exactly where he needs to be. He got chest to chest, and now he's going to try to impose himself on his opponent to start to really wear at the, the cardio. Dariush is looking to pass from full guard into half guard here, but he's denied. Just over three minutes to go round one. He passes to half guard. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand up, get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, 
breakaway and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than the half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free. So you have more freedom to use yours. All right, dominant position for him here, full mount. If you're the bottom fighter, better start moving those hips, DC. Oh, you gotta start moving those hips. What you should do initially, right, is start to push at the knees. Push at the hips, create some distance, shrimp, and try to recollect half guard. Half guard sucks, but it's much better than being mounted fully by your opponent. Oh, big shots from the top. Well, that was a high-level extended battle on the ground. Now, though, the athletes back to their feet, and no surprise, the crowd responds in time. The crowd just loves whenever they get two high-level strikers going at it. It was very hard to get back up after getting taken down. But he's got there now. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. Nice. Nicely done. Round two straight ahead. Well, what a round it was, especially from a striking standpoint. DC, take us through. High-level striking. I mean, this is what people come through the doors to see. Two men stand on a quarter, chest to chest, forehead to forehead, and let it all fly. I'm surprised nobody went out, but it does excite me for the next round. You ready to fight? Ready. Round two here. Pretty good connection there, yeah. Oh, he gets tagged there. Nice combination to the head. Good jab there by the champion. Success early. Back and forth we go. Oosh gets the single leg takedown. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensive. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Let's work. Come on, I'll stand you up. Let's work. Well, he's staying pretty effective here, fighting off of his back. Nice strike landed there by the bottom by Sarukyan. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Under three minutes now to go in the round. Sarukyan is in half guard. Trying to guard pass here, not today. No, it ain't happening. Good job understanding the transitions. Big ground and pound. All right, working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in these jiu-jitsu guys' guards. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys will start throwing up legs, chasing triangles. Well, he was a little bit lackluster. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. Got that submission locked up very tight. Getting tight. No way. He got out. This is a guy that never gives up on himself. He was able to clear his head, defend the arm bar. The fight looked done. So he loves to fight on. All right, feet on the hips here. Well, he's worked very hard on this part of his game, and these ground strikes are really starting to take their toll. Transition there as he reverses to top position. Beautiful work on the ground there by Sarukyan. Making all these shots count. Uh. 
drops down inside the now closed guard of his opponent. Working for the submission once again. He's fighting. He wants this very bad. Oh, compromise. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Uh, you ready to fight? You ready? Go Here ahead. we go, third round of this championship. What a beautiful leg kick the bank. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes on. Daryush gets caught by that frustrate punch. Nice job by the offense there. Nice defense. I mean, you land one, I land one. What a start. Oh, nice defense on the single leg attempt there. Showing off that leg dexterity and flexibility rubber guard now. I mean, it's unbelievable to watch these guys who are able to bring the legs all the way up around the shoulders and just control you. Because to me personally, and I'm no jujitsu expert, to me personally, it feels like this is a position to really just slow everything down. Are there submissions? Yes. But the ideal thing in this position is to slow you down from damaging and really just make you feel more in danger than you really are. Three minutes to go in round three. Big ground and pound. All right, half guard for him here, and a lot of offensive options, I would think, at his disposal. Oh, he's got a ton of options. He has submission options, but I believe the safest option for him here is going to be to use his ground and pound. Build a base, posture up, throw big strikes, and get back in position, build posture again, throw big strikes, and just really wear him down with a really secure position in half guard. Close guard, while working pretty effectively from the top here. Nice ground and pound by Sarukyan. Our rubber guard for him now, DC. We haven't seen you lean on this in the octagon. No, I, I can't get those <laughs> legs up there. Come on, man, look at these tree trunks. They don't go up around nobody's shoulders. I like to keep my feet on the ground, but I like to grind. That's what I'm known for. But this guy has that dexterity. He has that ability to throw up the rubber guard, to be able to threaten from a position where his opponent is trying to find safety. There are many, many attacks here. Let's see which one he chooses to go after. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been opened up in that eye area. Yeah, he's got hit in the eye, and now there's a cut. But it's nothing to worry about too much now. But he's got to be very careful with it as we go forward. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over. John and he just gets up. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. See if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount, and they rush. They get nervous. They're like, oh, my goodness, I'm winning. Reality is, you're winning. Oh, so saved by the bell. He was getting grounded and pounded something fierce there near the end of the round. You see, it's going to take him a good chunk of these 60 seconds between rounds just to get back to his feet. So a big moment here at the end of the round. We'll see if he can recover in time to make the walk here for this next round. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five, five minutes. All right, here we go, fourth round of a possible five. And this is the time where fighters are really tested, right? Dig deep, deep lean on the heart, we'll see who has the other. You feel pretty good in round number five. Round number four is the one that really does test the fighter. It really does test the metal of the guy inside of the octagon. Oh, now 
gets an underhook to get a more dominant position. Double leg is good. Man, look how flexible those legs are. He's got him in rubber guard. I don't think I can do that. I mean, John, don't sell yourself short. You just might be able to do it. But if you do, John, you're doing it with the idea that you're slowing everything right. down as a defensive fighter. There are submissions, right? There are submissions, but they're very rare submissions that we don't see used very often in the UFC. Oh, great ground shot there, and that one opened him up. All right, just as we saw a few seconds ago, he finds the home for another ground and pound strike. Beautiful punch lands there from inside the guard. Well, that combination's gonna leave a mark. You see him getting top position, standing over his opponent, and delivering the ground strike. Nice job by Sarukyan. Oh, another strike hits right on that cut. Ringside position might have to intervene soon. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Sarukyan. Again, not much defense there. Another ground strike gets through. Might get the TKO here. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Striking from every position lands a strike from the bottom. Sarukyan is in half goal. Get the out here. Well, the crowd continues to react with every passing land, but if you're the referee or even the corner, somebody's got to get involved. Like somebody's got to do something. It's getting very uncomfortable to watch this. And as the crowd gets excited, there's also a little bit of that. Yeah. I don't want to see any more going on in their reactions. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment, yep. Fifteen seconds to go. Now he's going full mount. Lands the grounded pound strike here. 20 minutes in the can, five to go. All right, back to the stools now, and he is no longer the handsome man we once knew. That gash is getting serious. All right, we're going to stay with him and follow him back to the corner to the stool because that is a really severe cut that he is dealing with. We'll see if the cut man can stem the bleeding here. All right, well, no surprise to see that eye continue to be targeted. Some replays from the previous round in which a lot of damage was doled out. Well, the cut man's got some work to do to try to give this kid an opportunity to stay in the fight because the reality is he has taken far too many shots to the eye and now he's dealing with a nasty cut. He has got to change something. And there's a takedown attempt. Oh, look at the guillotine. That guillotine is tight. Oh, he escapes. He got up. I mean, wow. That is great submission defense. Sawu Khan going to work here from guard. Nice combination there. Everything he throws is with fight ending intentions. a little more dangerous. Oh, right, it's a mouth. In the half guard. Wow, well, that eye is officially disgusting right now. I don't know, man, if I'm a doctor, maybe I'm thinking about getting involved. Well, you can see him getting up out of his seat. You know, he's looking very closely at the damage on the eye. We may get him in here before the round even ends. Darius is right back to the full mount. He's trying to get to a half guard at least, at minimum. Try to go to half guard. Print the shirts, ground and pound. One, guys, come on. He's got to be careful here.
Hart, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are because it's dangerous. But there are a lot of outs, and if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. Darius is trying to lock up on a submission now. Let's go tight, this is. It's getting tight right now, John. Oh, the submission defense holds up. He gets out. He said that he was ready for everything that would be thrown at him. In that position, he showed that and proved it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. is back inside control. Darius is an absolute mess. I wonder if they might call in the ringside position and potentially stop this fight. Good work from the top here by Sarukyan. Oh, another strike lands from the top. Final seconds of the fight. All right, working on the ground here, his opponent's feet on the hips. Back and forth action right until the final horn. That one's gonna hold up in the fight of the year conversation. Well, we are the only two men sitting in this arena tonight after a 25-minute title fight there. Epic back and forth affair. I think the challenger might have done enough. The champ didn't want to let go of his title. He fell a little bit short, and we should have a new UFC champion. He did a great job of using his all-around MMA game in order to take the belt away from the champ. All right, the official decision is now in. Here is Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. For the winner by split decision, and new UFC lightweight champion of the What a moment there it is for the new UFC lightweight champion. I'm not crying. That, you're crying? Are you crying? <laughs> I mean, almost. I, it's hard not to feel emotional when you watch someone accomplish something 